Very good. Hebrews chapter number 11. Verse number 23. Hebrews 11. Verse number 23. The Bible said that by faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw that he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command by faith Moses when he became of age refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin esteeming the reproach of Christ of greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he looked to the reward by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible everybody said amen to the reading of God's word amen you may be seated my subject today is simply called this when it's time to say goodbye how to shut the door on the things and people that are holding you back now there are some things that are very difficult to say goodbye to when you've been visiting your family that you've not seen for a very long time and you come to the end of that visit it's very hard to say goodbye to hug their neck with tears and have to go back to the normalcy of life and the normalcy of work. It's hard to say goodbye when you have to drop your child off at college for the very first time. How many have had to experience that kind of goodbye? Never knowing if their laundry is ever going to be done right again. <laughs> that their white shirts will turn out pink because they washed it with the colors. It's tough to say goodbye to your spouse when he or she has to go on a long extended business trip. There are some things that are very difficult to say goodbye to, some things that are very difficult to come to an end. You're watching a riveting movie that has captivated your attention, and all of a sudden it has a surprise ending, and the credits begin to roll, and you're thinking, man, what was that about? Or the ending of a great dinner that your wife has made comes to an end, and dessert is over, it's all gone, it's all done. There are some things that are very tough to say goodbye to, some things that are very difficult to bring an end to. But I submit to you this morning that there are some people and there are some things in your life that require a necessary ending. There are some things that require a necessary goodbye. There are some relationships and there are some issues in your life that require you to close the door and never open it again. Some things that need to be trimmed, that need to be cut. And I believe one of the greatest examples of this is these rose bushes that we see of the beautiful roses that blossom and bloom. And we know they would never get that way unless a careful gardener took his trimming shears and cut off all of the dead and all of the sick branches and buds off of that tree. Because as long as there are dead branches and sick branches, the, the healthy branches have no room to blossom. They have no room to bloom. And so they too will die. Now, I've come to you this morning with a word that I feel very, very strongly about. I feel like the Lord spoke to me about 10 days ago as I walked in this sanctuary. This, this title came to mind. And I knew that the Lord wanted me to share this with you. So I pray that not only I preach this with the anointing, but that you also will receive and hear this with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because I believe today is going to change your life. Because there are some things that no matter how painful, it needs to be cut out of your life. There are some relationships that have become sick or that have died that need to be cut out. There are some issues that are holding you back and stifling your growth that need to be cut out of your life. And as long as you continue with those things that have died, God can never give you the life that he wants to bring. Until you are willing to say goodbye to the old, you can never say hello to the new. Until you are willing to shut the door on what was, 
you can never open the door to what can be. And so consequently, if you will allow me for the next few moments to preach this message when it is time to say goodbye. And I want to use the Old Testament character of Moses that we have read about in Hebrews chapter number 11. Because out of his story come some principles that I believe will help you, guide you, assist you in saying goodbye and closing the door to the things and people that don't belong in your life. And the first principle is found in verse 24 of our text. Where the Bible said, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The first principle is this, saying goodbye requires an awareness. It requires you to become aware of what is going on around you. It requires you to become aware of what you have become. Moses, the Bible said, when he came of years. Now, that doesn't specifically mean a numerical age like 14, 16, 18, 25. In our culture, we attach certain events to a numerical age. When you turn 16, what happens? You get your driver's license and your dad has a heart attack because he's so afraid of you driving. <laughs> when you become 18, you have the eligibility to vote. When you become 21, the world deems you as legal, whatever that means. So we attach certain events to a numerical age. But when the Bible said that Moses came of age or came to years, it doesn't mean that he arrived at a certain numerical age, but rather it means that Moses came to the point that he was aware of the surroundings of the people with whom his life had become engaged and the influence and the effect that it had on him. In other words, now for the very first time in his life, Moses had the ability and the wherewithal and the maturity to make a decision for himself. Because up to this point, Moses had every decision in his life already made for him. Allow me, if you will, to go through this story with you. Because when you begin to go back to the beginning of the life of Moses, you will find, in fact, in verse number 23, you will find that from the beginning when he was born, he was hit three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child. Be reminded of the story of Moses. The reason that he was hidden is because when Moses was born in the land of Egypt, the Hebrews were slaves and they were enslaved by the Egyptian people. And the Pharaoh of Egypt at that time had become so jealous of the population explosion in the land of Goshen and the Israelites where they lived. He became jealous thinking these Jews, they're going to outpopulate us. They're going to outpower us. And so he made the decree in, he, in Exodus chapter one look back at this with me it's going to be on the screen as well he said in verse 22 he charged all his people he said every son that is born you will cast into the river every daughter you will save alive in other words the midwives as they would deliver these Hebrew babies were commanded to cast all of the male Hebrews into the Nile River for them to be drowned and for them to be destroyed so when you think about it Moses should have never survived. Moses should have been killed. Moses should have been born or should have been uh, dead as an infant. But out of this, God gave the wisdom to his mother and his father to hide this young child. The Bible said for three months they hid him in their house. And there came a point at which Moses could no longer be hid. And so at that moment God gave the wisdom, Exodus 2 and verse number 3, the wisdom to the mother of Moses. The Bible said that when she could not hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes. She daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Now, when I read that, I thought it was amazing that the very river that should have destroyed Moses was the same river that delivered Moses. 
This is the same river that as an infant Moses should have died, but yet God used that which the enemy meant to destroy him, to deliver him, and to put him in a position where Moses would be discovered by the daughter of Pharaoh himself. The enemy that sought to destroy him, God put him in the very household of his enemy and made Moses a great man of God. Can I tell you this morning, amen, the enemy has tried to destroy and to kill you and to take you out. He has tried to kill you through a car accident. He's tried to destroy you through a nasty divorce. He has tried to take you out through a drug overdose. He has tried to manipulate and destroy your life. But I tell you this morning, the same thing that the enemy uses to destroy you, God is going to turn that around and he's going to use that to discover and develop you so that you can reach your destiny in Almighty God. Come on, somebody say amen. Oh, what the enemy meant for evil, God turns it around for good. What the enemy meant to drown out your potential, God turns it around and releases his power into your life. You're still here by the grace of God. Come on, somebody. You're a survivor. Amen. The devil tried to drag you to hell. But God said, no, I've got another plan. For you see, the moment that Moses was conceived, God already put his hand on this young infant in his mama's belly and said, you are going to be the deliverer and the emancipator of Israel. And there is no edict of Pharaoh that is ever going to take you out of my will. And I tell you today, no matter what the devil brings against you, you, you will not be destroyed because you are covered by the grace and by the power of Almighty God. Amen. He's got His hand on you. He's got His power on you. And His presence is surrounding you. And so His mother puts Him in this ark of the bulrushes. And she puts Him in the very position, the very spot, where the daughter of Pharaoh goes to bathe with her maidens. And as she bathes, she discovers uh, this young child. And even though she knows that he is a Hebrew, she takes him unto herself and she adopts him. And after a period of being nursed by his own mother, and that's another story in and of itself that we may get to one day. But Moses, after that period of nursing, uh, is placed in the palace uh, of Egypt. Here's a young man that's got absolutely everything uh, that any boy could ever desire. He's got servants. Uh, he's got the finest of accessories. Accessories. He's got the finest of food. He's got the finest of clothing. And more than that, he's got the finest of training and education. In fact, history said that the Egyptian royalty, they were trained by military generals and political geniuses. And so Moses sat at the feet of some of the most intelligent and some of the most renowned people in all of the world. And he received his education and he was trained and he was nurtured within the palace. But there came a point in his life at the Bible said and this is what I want you to grasp hold of today there came a point in his life when he came to years that he understood that even though I've got everything that anybody could ever desire I know deep inside of me that there is something more there is something better there is something that God Jehovah has called that is higher than what I have right now and at that moment Moses made made a decision to say goodbye to his adopted mother and refuse to be called his her son he said goodbye to the palace goodbye to the servants goodbye to the food and the accessories and he walked out of the palace and cut off the environment and the people that surrounded him because they were standing in his way of becoming who Jehovah had created him to be are you all hearing what I'm about to say? I say that to you because there are people under the sound of my voice that right today on this sixth day of August, seventh day of August, you are in the exact same position. Amen. You are in a position where you are now becoming aware that the people that are around you are somehow hindering your growth. A relationship in which you are involved has stifled, has stymied, and siphoned your spiritual strength. And now you're surrounded 
in an environment that is in some way hindering you or is in some way limiting you and the Holy Spirit is in this house. How many are glad he's here today? Let me hear you say amen. I feel something special. Amen. That God is just hovering over this congregation right now and he's saying you've come to the point where you become aware that there's more than what you've got. There's more out there than what you've experienced. There is a deeper level, level of the anointing than you have ever felt. There is a deeper experience in God than you have ever had. And now the Lord is saying it is time for you to say goodbye. It is time for you to walk away from what was and to walk into what will be. It is time to walk away from who you were and to walk into who you shall be. It is time to cut off everything that is in some way stymied your spiritual growth. It is time to say goodbye and say hello to what God is about to do in your life. And the Holy Spirit has now begun to make aware in the bosom of your soul. There's relationships that have hindered you. There are habits in your life that in some way have stifled your spiritual growth. To some, you may be dating someone that is not a believer and they have siphoned out the anointing that God wants to bring into your life. Amen. There may be a habit. There may be an addiction that the devil has got you chained and locked up with. That the Lord is saying, I'm here with the key of my anointing to unlock that addiction so that you can say goodbye. Amen. To the bondage and say goodbye to the imprisonment and realize this is the day of your deliverance and you can walk out a free man and a free woman by the grace and by the power of Almighty God. Oh, listen, I feel hard in my spirit and anointing to tell you God has brought you not just to sing today, He brought to make you free in this place. Somebody shout amen. Things that you may watch on television. That in some way have stood between you and the anointing that God wants to bring into your life. I look at Paul the Apostle. He went to the Galatians, the Bible says, in verse 7 of chapter 5. He said, you did run well. Who hindered you? Here you've got Jews in Galatia. They've been set free. From the Mosaic Old Testament law. They've been set free from the ceremonialism. And they've embraced the freedom that comes through the grace of Jesus Christ. And they're living free. And all of a sudden some Jews come and they try to drag them back into the ceremonialism of the law. And Paul comes along and I just can almost hear the words of the Apostle Paul. He was a straight shooter. He spoke his mind and he was one that said, what do you think you're doing? He said, here you are. You're free by the grace of Jesus. But somebody's coming and hindering your freedom. And I ask you the same question. Amen. You were doing well. What has stood? Who has stood in the way of the freedom that God wants to bring into your life? Whatever it is, whoever it is, it is time to say goodbye. Somebody shout amen. I want you to say the word goodbye out loud with me. Come on, you can do better than that. Say goodbye. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that empowering to know that you will be hindered no longer? You will be hindered no longer. I feel that is a word from the Lord. You will be hindered no longer. The hindrance that the enemy has put in your way. God is saying, I am about to remove. And the stumbling block that has tripped you up day after day. And made you feel in a way that you don't want to feel. That stumbling block is being removed in this house. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you're saying goodbye. Whatever it might be. For you see, Moses came to the point, I think, that he understood who he was surrounded with had changed who he was. He surrounded as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, the Bible says in our text of verse 24. As the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he was identified as an Egyptian. He dressed like an Egyptian. He ate like an Egyptian. He had the social cultures of an Egyptian. He adopted the lifestyle of an Egyptian. He probably even looked like an Egyptian. 
But the problem is, he wasn't an Egyptian. He's a Hebrew. He literally is living in a world that is not his. He is a Hebrew living in an Egyptian world. And there came a point at which Moses understood, no matter how pleasurable this might be, this is not who I am. And I have got to, oh my God, I feel the anointing right now. I have got to walk away from the temporary pleasures of this Egyptian lifestyle. And I've got to walk into who God has created me to be. Can I tell you, my friend, amen, the church was never meant to fit into this world. We are in this world, but Jesus said we are not of this world. The Bible said, what fellowship hath light with darkness? What communion hath Christ with Belial? Listen, my friend, if there was ever a time that the church needs to say goodbye to the pleasures of sin in this world that time is right now because Paul said come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord listen my friend the light of Jesus needs to shine more brilliantly now than it has ever shown but we cannot shine brilliantly if we are blending in to the world that is around us amen you're living in a world that is not yours. Can I tell you this world is not my home? I said this world is not my home. Ah, there is a better place. There is a better treasure. There is a better wonder, a better heaven. And I can there is a better place to which my soul is destined to be. And it's a place of divine perfection, divine beauty, and divine glory. Listen, don't get too attached to this world and let this world change who you are. Amen. So many times. We try to fit in to who's around us and what's around us. We dress like everybody tells us to dress. We eat the food that everybody tells us to eat. We get on social media and see what everybody else is doing, thinking if I would just do what they do, maybe I would be happy and maybe I would be popular. We fit into the social customs of what everybody says is trending and what everybody says is popular. And you may be in that position right now. You're doing what everybody else says that you should, but you come to the end of your day and you are empty and you are destitute and you are not happy with who you are. I'm telling you the reason you're not happy is because you're living in a world that does not belong to you. And it's time for you to step out and say, it doesn't matter what people say that I should do. I am stepping into what God says and I should do. It doesn't matter what people say that I should act like. I want to act like the Word of God says and I am to act like. I am a chosen child of the Most High God, a priest and a king under God. Don't you dare lower yourself to a sin degraded, damned world and look up and see that I am a child of the Most High God that's been redeemed from damnation, forgiven from sin. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I will not fit in to what the world says that I should be. Amen. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. I said it's time to say goodbye. Say goodbye. Because there's coming a day in which Jesus is going to come from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And you better believe I'm going to say goodbye at that moment as my feet lose their sense of cavitation and I am raptured up into heaven. Goodbye world, goodbye. I will never, ever depredate myself again with this world. praise in this place. Hallelujah! My God, my God. Look at your neighbor say, it's time to say goodbye. It's time to say goodbye. You've got to be aware. You've got to be aware of what's going on around you. You've got to be aware of who is around you. Because you see what happens is you don't even realize that you've changed. You don't even realize that you've changed. You become so accustomed to being what everybody says you should be that you don't even realize your life is different. There was a time in my life when I was a teenager. 
My older sister had to come to me and say, listen, buddy, little brother, there's been some changes that I've seen in you. And it's because of who you are hanging with. And I got to be honest, as a little teenage brother who knows better than his older sister. And older sisters, don't you ever forget how much power we little brothers have. I wouldn't point at anybody specific. I'm just pointing in this direction. And I was angry. And I was offended. But when I began to think about it, and I took some time to consider, I then saw that, yes, I had changed. Because, you see, the influences of the world are so subtle that they begin to change us without us even realizing it. And there are changes in your life, and I don't know exactly to whom the Lord is directing this, but there are changes that have taken place in your life because of the relationships in which you have become involved. You are involved with people that have begun to subtly alter your values and your convictions and the things that you do in life. And right now the Lord is saying you need to become aware of the surroundings and the environment because you have become somebody that you are not. And that's why Moses came to the point that he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I can see when somebody tried to call him by his Egyptian, or, uh, Egyptian title. He said, no, that's not me anymore. I know I've probably told this story before. And if I have, forgive me, but it's one of my favorite stories. But there was a time in which there was a little eaglet, a baby eagle that was orphaned. His mother had died. And so this baby eagle was by himself and there was a brood, I guess that's what you call prairie chickens, but a brood of prairie chickens that came along. And they adopted this little eagle. They took it as one of its own. And they actually raised this little eaglet like a prairie chicken. Now prairie chickens are not clean animals. They eat the dirt, the gravel, even the feces of other animals. So this little eaglet is raised as a prairie chicken. He walks like a prairie chicken. If prairie chickens talk, he talked like a prairie chicken. He pecked at the ground, eating the gravel and the dirt and the feces. And he lived his life in early years as a prairie chicken because that's who he was with. That's what he was told. But there came a day in which this little eaglet looked up in the sky. He took a break from pecking at the ground and he looked up in the sky and he saw this majestic bird begin to soar across the horizon. And he watched this bird spread his wings like royalty. And he looked up and something leaped within his heart. And he thought, wow. I would love to become like that bird. And so he called out to his prairie chicken mama. And prairie chicken mama came over. And the little eaglet looked up at his mama. He said, mama, what is that bird? And the prairie chicken bird looked up and saw that eagle that was majestically flying. And he looked back. She looked back at her little adopted baby. And she said, oh, honey, that's an eagle. But you will never be an eagle because you are a prairie chicken. And the little baby looked up at his mama and said, But mama, I want to be like that eagle. And the prairie chicken mama got angry. And she looked at that little eaglet and she said, Son, get that out of your mind right now. Because you are not an eagle. You are a prairie chicken. And you will always be a prairie chicken. And don't you ever forget it. And that little prairie chicken mama, she waddled off. And that eaglet took one more look up at the sky. And saw that eagle majestically soaring over the horizon. And something jumped in his heart. But then he went back to eating the grub and the dirt and the feces of the ground and lived the rest of his life like a prairie chicken. Even though inside he had the ability to soar like an eagle because that's who he was. He listened to the voice of a prairie chicken mama that did not know any better or that her had her own agenda. And she convinced him to live the rest of his life like a prairie chicken. Why do I tell you that story? Because I believe that there are some of you in this room right now. Hear me, if you miss everything, do not miss what I'm about to say your entire life. People have told you you will never amount to anything. You will never achieve anything. You will never do anything 
thing of significance in your life. Get out of your head that you're going to succeed. Get out of your head that you're going to serve God. Get out of your head that you're ever going to fulfill your ministry. And you just live the life that you can, the best you can. And so what you've done is you've lived your entire life listening to the voice of a doubter and a dissenter. And you've been feeding on the grub and the dirt and the pebbles of this world, never knowing that inside of you is a spiritual eagle that God has put that has given you the power to spread your wings and to begin to soar and to begin to fly. And I tell you as your pastor, I tell you by the divine unction of the Holy Ghost, God is about to release the eagle that is inside and the limitations that people have put on you. And I rebuke that lie that you have lived with all of your life. And I want you to know it is time for you to spread your wings and soar higher than you have ever soared. Fly higher than you have ever flown. Because there's an eagle inside and God wants to release the ego so that you can become who you were born to be. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God release it but you got to say goodbye. I'm not Pharaoh's grandson. I'm not no matter what you try to give me going to live the rest of my life in the palace because as long as Moses stayed in the palace he would never find his purpose and that leads me to the second thing and I'm not going to get done today but the second thing not only do you need to become aware and I believe the Holy Spirit has made you aware in this place right now some things holding you back people holding you back but not only do you need to become aware, number two, you need to take action. I said action. Because if you don't do anything about what you know, you will stay in the same position that you are. Now, go back to our text in Exodus chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible said that it came to pass in those days that when Moses was grown, he went out unto his brethren and he looked on their burdens. You see, only when Moses became aware that the palace was not where he belonged, did he finally realize that it was time to step out. And when he stepped out of the palace walls, he saw things that he had never seen before. He finally saw the Jewish brethren burdened under the task mastery of the Egyptians. He saw them trying to make bricks without straw. He saw the sorrow that was in their eyes. And at that moment when Moses saw what he'd never seen, even though it had been going on for decades, he still now for the first time saw his brothers and the situation in which they now lived. And I believe at that moment when he saw their eyes, something sparked within him that said, this is why I was born. I was born to deliver these people. People. I was born to set them free. I was born to lead them out of Egypt. Friends, you see, as long as you stay behind the walls of your relationship, as long as you stay behind the walls of your addiction, you will never be able to see what is going on outside of those walls. As long as you stay in that manipulative relationship. As long as you stay in that unhealthy relationship. You will never be able to see that out there is a relationship that God has waiting on you. That He has prepared only for you. But you're locked in so afraid to say goodbye that you're never going to see that there's something better and someone better outside the walls of the manipulation under which you now live. Can I tell you that what you tolerate in your life will continue in your life. If you tolerate people manipulating you, they will continue to manipulate you. If you tolerate negativity in your life, you will live in a negative world for the rest of your life. How about you step outside of the relationship and realize you're going to see something better than you've ever seen. Why? Because you said goodbye. Amen. But it wasn't enough for him to see it. He had to act on what he saw. The Bible says, if you will, Verse 11 of Exodus chapter 2. He spied an Egyptian. Spying in Hebrew one of his brethren. And he looked this way. 
You look that way. You ever done that? Look over your shoulder, make sure nobody's looking. And when he saw that no one was there, the Bible said he killed. He slew the Egyptian and he hid him in the sand. You see, no doubt this treatment of Jewish people happened all the time. Moses just never saw it. But once he saw it, he acted on what he saw. Now, I'm not telling you to go kill somebody. <laughs> Twitter will explode. Pastor Mark told us to go kill that. But I'm telling you this. You need to slay the issue and the giant that is in your heart that is holding you back from the best. Oh, come on, somebody. You cannot tolerate it one more day because it is destroying you. And Moses said, no more will Egypt have precedence over the Jewish people. These are God's people. And you Egyptians will no longer rule. And symbolically, he slew that Egyptian and buried him in the sand. And today at this altar... How many are ready to slay the thing that is holding you back and say, no more devil, will you have precedence or dominance over me? I am killing it. I am burying it. It is gone once and for all. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you're involved in a relationship that is draining you, you've got to cut it off. I said, you've got to cut it off. If there's a habit that is killing you, you've got to cut it off. You say, Pastor, I can control it. I can handle it. No, my friend, there's coming a day the alcohol, the drugs is going to manipulate you and it's going to destroy you. And it's time by the grace of God to cut it off now before it becomes too big in your life. Because I'm telling you, my friend, the devil is a liar. I said he is a deceiver. And he will tell you, you can handle it. You can handle the drink. You can handle the drug. No, you can't, my friend. That's why the Bible said the flesh is lusting against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. We've got to mortify the kill, put to death the deeds of the body so that the spirit can live. Amen. Now you think, boy, Pastor, you're being rough today. But no rougher than Jesus. I said no harder than Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 18, he said, if your eye offends you, what do you do? Pluck it out. Woo, that's hard preaching. He said, if your right hand offends you, what do you do? Cut it off. He said, it is better for you to enter into life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be cast into hellfire. The word offend simply means to put a stumbling block or impediment in the way. I know that sounds drastic, but Jesus is telling us. And I want you to hear, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Jesus is telling you, whatever is the impediment, whatever is the stumbling block, He is saying you have got to pluck it out and cut it off today. Because if you don't cut it off, the influence is going to continue to grow in your life until you come to the time in which you completely have lost that anointing. And God said, no, I've got so much better for you. Cut it off so that you can be open to what I have to give unto you. It's time to take action because you will never change what you're willing to tolerate. You will never change what you're willing to tolerate. You see, my friend, as they begin to play, I feel now the Holy Spirit has begun to awaken something deep inside of you. Jesus said goodbye. He did. He said goodbye. The Bible said he left the glories of heaven. He said goodbye to the pristine perfection of heaven and came down to this earth. He said goodbye to the perfection of deity and became a man just like you, just like me. You say, Pastor, it's hard to say goodbye. Yeah, think of Jesus. Think of Jesus having to say goodbye 
and go to the cross, the Bible said he humbled himself and became a servant even unto death, the death of the cross. And that's why as we take communion today, I believe the power of the blood is going to give you power to say goodbye. The power of the broken body of Jesus Christ is going to give you power to cut off all that habit that has become an impediment and a stumbling block. And right now in this house, I want you to bow your heads with me because I, I sense the Holy Spirit doing something deep inside. My ushers are coming, but I want you to bow your heads. Everybody, head bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around, nobody leaving at this moment because the Holy Spirit is doing a deep, deep of work in your soul today. Heads bowed, eyes closed, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you that you have come. Thank you that you've given us life through the blood of Jesus. You've given us health. You've given us peace. You've given us salvation. But Lord, I feel like in this house there's people that have been hindered in their walk. There's been an impediment that has stood in their way. And today, Father, I take the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And in Jesus' name, I declare that they will be set free. Lord, that stumbling block is going to be broken. That hindrance is going to be shattered by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I want you to be glorified. Jesus, I just want you to be glorified. With heads bowed, eyes closed, I want you to acknowledge that, that today, if the Lord has begun to deal with you, that you would say, Pastor, nobody's looking around, you're not going to be embarrassed. But you say, Pastor, I realize the Lord is saying it's time for me to say goodbye to something or someone in my life. I want you to acknowledge that by raising your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Amen. This, this right now, the Lord is saying it's time for me to cut it off. Amen. It may be a habit. It may be an addiction. It may be, I don't know what it is, but the Lord has made you aware that's the first step. And now you've got to take action on that step. And that's why I invite you right now to stand all across this building. And as they begin to sing this song, I want you to step out of your seat. And as you do, our ushers are going to serve you the elements of communion. And as you are served the juice and the bread, make your way down to this altar. And together we are going to release, amen, the power of the blood of Jesus. And you are going to have the power to say goodbye. Amen. Come on, join.